What's good, Ken Gandhi? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another collaboration here on the channel. Make sure you guys like, comment, hit the bell. And today, I'm with the brother that you guys have seen me on here with, Brother George Macon from the Urban Nerds YouTube channel. I'll let him uh, go ahead and introduce himself about and, and what his channel is about. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> basically, we're about developing young black boys and girls and to be the best version of themselves. Uh, I have my nonprofit, 501c3 Urban Nerds. Like I, you know, as I said before, previous, you know, we take our kids on um, college tours. We're working out um, scholarship programs to get them uh, funding to get into uh, trade schools. Uh, we take them um, to military bases. We do a, a bunch of different things, taking them out of the hood to expose them to uh, different things. That's basically what our Urban Nerds is about. So me and you both have some you know, interesting conversations. You know, usually uh, it's surrounding the African-American community because we're both from that community. But then we it always steers into uh, what's going on in Africa. And, uh, and I, I, you know, when I was there, we, we talked quite regularly, just like we do almost almost daily now. But we, we were talking and you, you, you hinted at something you know, there's a reason why um, the system or white people or white supremacy, why they don't want African-Americans or the diaspora, the Caribbeans included and all of that, why they don't want us working with Africa directly. I thought that was pretty interesting. Why, why did you make that statement? Just just look at us as African-Americans now. We're the salt of the earth. We influence the world even when we're not in our right state of mind. We don't speak our native language. We don't practice our native culture, none of that stuff. But yet still, under all this duress that we've been under as a people, how do we still influence the world? How, how are we the ones that own three pat three patents to the nine patents of IBM? How, how are we the ones, when you look at Dr. Leonidas, the one that understood uh, 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 cancer in the stomach and all these different things, brain aneurysms, all the stuff that the African-American, Alice Ball, uh, uh, discovering the cure for Hansen's disease. I mean, I can go on and on and on. I can just name names. Your, your, your uh, Homer Lawrence system, Maria Van Britten. I mean, God damn, the African-American, he wouldn't even let us into certain universities. You, you, you kill us for learning how to read, but yet and still your transmission, your stoplight, that's all us. So imagine what we, the, the stuff that we've done just under these conditions, what we can do if we was able to link up with Africa and have access to the resources now and be able to compete against this, this system and not work for it. Man, I don't even think, see, the enemy know more about us than we know about ourselves. Mm -hmm. he, he knows what we created. I mean, you, you, you talk about cortisone, that's a black man. You talk about zoology, Charles, Charles Henry Turner was the first person in the world, not just black man, but understood that insect, insects can hear. And, and based off experiences, they changed their behaviors and stuff. This is a black zoologist. He taught the white man and everybody this. We don't know who we are. They know who we are. And they make sure that they keep us away from Africa and unifying with that large continent and taking our swag, our intelligence, our inventions, and linking up with them because it changes the whole, it changes everything. They know it. So they, they always have systems do propaganda to keep us separate and so on so many different levels from education to smear campaigns to downright fear to religions to so many different things that they use to keep us separate. Mm -hmm. They use that white woman. They use everything. Everything is a weapon to keep the African and African-American from unifying and working together. One of the things that, um, that I noticed when I was, when I was, uh, in the continent of Africa, um, is that, you know, while I, while I know that we are a talented uh, group of people, one of the things that, you know, when I was coming up and maybe looking at stuff on television, I used to didn't think about like people in Africa being, as talented at all, right? You just didn't know any better. Mm. Wasn't until I started going there, and then I was like, "Wait a minute!" Like, 
Not only do I see somebody who looked like everybody I've seen in because think first thing that happens when you go to Africa, you go to see somebody who looks like somebody you know right in the hood, right in the hood, right. And you're gonna be like, is that he in Africa? And then you start to notice like, okay, we definitely come from here. You start to see their talent, and that's one things that I really notice. It's like I know our talent in the African American community, but whoa, the African talent was like Jesus Christ. It was amazing. It's amazing, like. The creatives, the vibe, just the way that they did, the, what did they do things? It was just wow! Like I never thought about it like that. But it was easy for me to handpick people and be like, "Damn, bro, you driving an Uber? Like, why are you driving an Uber? Like, <laughs> she come work for me, or we'll work with me, or we can partner or something, right?" Like, but the one thing I noticed is, is it happens also in Black America too, but it also happens in Africa, where the people that are in these countries have so much talent around them to build everything that they need that they don't recognize. And, and like you said, white folks recognize us and the talent that we have more than we recognize ourselves. And they use it to their advantage. Yes. And so when I started noticing, like even the King Ghana team, Jonita, you know, Kim, Satati, like all of these people that have all this talent were like, like not even being recognized where they were from. But I saw it like instantly. It was like, wow, like, you guys are all you know, like, I need to work with you guys. Why is it that the white men are in, even in, in both our respective communities in the, in the black American community? We we don't recognize the talent as much that we have it. And in Africa, they don't recognize a lot of time. I know they don't, that they have so many people that can build up the continent, but they're not given the right opportunities. They're not given the, 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 the opportunities to shine. Why is it that, that that they can't recognize what they have also as far as not even just resources, but the talent as a resource? Why can't they recognize that? Because, because of the way we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. The way we view ourselves. We still have that crabs in the barrel mentality, whether on the continent or whether here in the States. It, it go back to wanting for your brother what you want for yourself and building each other up. We we don't have we don't have that proper self love, man, for each other to want to own and control. And like I said, we we look at the white man as his ice being colder. Still to this day, nothing has changed, man. Like you you went you went to Africa as a black man and you built something. It took you a while. We talked on the phone in its beginning stages. And you went and did something in Uganda that Ugandan men could have done. But, you know, it stands the question as to why it's not being done. But you you couldn't do it here in America, but you went to Africa and you did it. You employ, you have, you employ Africans. Um, you build in the team. You build infrastructure. And the more and more we get into that thought process of doing it more, you already broke the mold and showed us that it could be done. You show Africans that they can do it. You show African Americans that they can do it. So now we got to start doing it on so many different levels. But like, as far as the YouTuber on YouTube, you already show people when people say, "Oh man, you can't go to Africa and do this shit." I say, "I disagree. I can use you as the template now." Let me let me let me ask you because you know one of the things that keeps the in America, there's certain little beefs here and there, but it's never so bad that it comes into like anything, anybody that's fighting. But, you know, obviously, you know, there's the, um, you know, the, the Ethiopians sometimes can be over there. The richer community can be over there a little bit, you know, and then one of the things that I, I noticed that, you know, obviously I, I, I shout out to people like Wody Maya and a lot of other people are starting to understand like, yeah, we can still be different, but all be you know we could all have a, a common goal one of the things that keeps us uh separate are these things and you know like even in, in rwanda where you had the, the the hutu and the tutsi in the in the belgium were separating one because they had better features and then that turned into the rwandan genocide like years later and it seems like there's been a division that the white people will tell the africans when they come into america like you don't want to uh go go hang out with with, with 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 those blacks because they're 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 ghetto and hood and they're and they're, and they're dangerous so when you see them in movies and on, on on the music you think about that and then to us they're showing us that they're poor they got lions running around everywhere you know what i mean they're out there doing animalistic things and it keeps a divide between you know the continent and the whole diaspora right and i noticed that that 
that beef has always kind of been there it's not it's, it's getting better now but that divide is there how do we you know say listen we know that this divide is not really between me and you that divide is coming from somebody else so i can't use that divide as to why i can't work with you how do we do that and come out of that divide because we know that that's the enemy that's doing it the only way i can answer that is you you only can work with those that understand it and this, Boom. this is the thing you can't fix everybody right away and then right. you can't save everybody but what you can do is this what i always tell people you don't need 100 percent of people to be woke out of that you only need about five to ten you begin to work the bill see this is the thing o'shea and like i told you on the phone earlier the people that work for you and in, in, in uganda do you do you have like any serious problems with them nope and why 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 is that why you think you don't have serious problems with them from your perspective with africans yeah with them the ones that the ones that work with you because they end up because they can at least they're in the middle and they can at least they're, they're they at least can understand and i'm proving what i'm saying also there's a benefit right so and they and they have a, a ear to be open to what i'm talking about i'm gonna tell you why you came out there with an idea and you manifested it into power and they benefit from it right you're feeding them you came out there with a dream and an idea and you launched it and even if they didn't believe in it at first they see it coming into fruition mm -hmm. and it's going to do nothing but grow and grow and grow and you have people on board they say black people can't work together i disagree you're working right. with black people right it's sufficient too people are watching people are benefiting from the videos that you put up every day not realizing that it's black minds and hands behind this yeah so the thing is the woke black people got to do stuff now don't get me wrong in the 60s right you had efficient black men and there was a different time during uh, uh you still had colonization and stuff going on and you had uh we still was an industrial age where they was building families still creating families and doing things to work in factories and system was set up for you to be born out of a womb go to a school graduate from school and go work in a factory to keep these industries going they don't need too much of that anymore so they basically destroying that but back then africans and african-americans was trying to work together they had pan-africanism you had african leaders that came here studying like kwame nkrumah you had people like jomo kenyatta and different people that came on this soil and went back to africa with that liberation way of thinking you had africans that was murdered on so many different levels like seymour michelle samora michelle thomas sankara um patrice lamumba 1960 you know um, and countless others then you have black leaders that was murdered here that was pushing the pan-africanist thought most people don't i did a video uh called when black power was a global phenomenon and people don't even understand that black power revolution wasn't just in america it was all throughout now why are you saying this george because the thing is the, what we, the conversation we have now is the same conversations that they had in the 60s it's the same conversation the same conversations that was being had in trinidad it was the same conversations that was had in bermuda look at the bermuda black power organizations and what they did it was the same same situation that was being had in Australia. Yes, Australia had a black power movement. Canada. Just look up Walter Rodney from Guyana, who was killed in 1980 in a, in a car explosion. That's how powerful he was in his works in Tanzania. We had these ideas, but the system sought to keep us separate because you gotta understand something, white supremacy is a well-organized, well-oiled machine. White supremacy is not guns, bombs, and bullets. White supremacy is propaganda and psychological conditioning to make you see yourself as something less than. So, so because of that, you give them white power over you. You rather work for AT and T. You rather work for IBM. You rather work for these industries instead of working with your fellow brother because you look at your say you look at your fellow brother through the same stereotypical lens that the system looks at him through because you're being educated by your enemy. So the thing is, they don't they don't want us together. Even the Africans, 
they they got to leave Africa to go to Europe to get education or come to America to get education. Oh, shit, how many Africans even go back to build Africa? Let alone African Americans. It's all psychological. And the minute we get out of this psychological conditioning, the minute we take this the world back, mm -hmm. Africans and African Americans working together in tandem, are you? You can't be serious. I mean, me. I, I mean, me personally. I look at African Americans, us in the West. Period. Uh, uh, here in the West, we're the salt of the earth. To me, in my opinion, I. I mean, I'm, I'm different. I'm. We the chosen people. I mean, just look at us. The things that how we influence the world and all our inventions and everything that people benefit from. You know, Africa is our mother, and you know, you know, we're, we're her. Chi we're one of her children, and we're we're, we're those. Well, listen, African Americans, Caribbean, African American man, we the shit, and everybody else know it. The problem is, oh shit, we don't know it. We don't know it. You notice everybody's. We we are like a multi trillion dollar empire, industry. The African American, the African Caribbean, us. Everybody watches to see what we do. Everybody look at our invention. The reason why I mentioned the Caribbean because in America, you in America, uh, uh, the Caribbean Caribbean people, Jamaica, Haiti, and all those kind of they they all amalgamated into us anyway. We're all the same people, and we influence this world, man. But I don't think that we understand from entertainment. And the boardrooms, uh, uh, basketball stuff, that, machines that they use to even take uh, resources out the ground. That's us. They know it. That's why they don't want to let you go. That's why when the Patrice Lumumba stands up and he appeals to the United States and the UN, they turn Patrice Lumumba down. So then he has to go to the Soviet Union to appeal. Mm -hmm. It don't work out for him, and they end up killing him. They got mm -hmm. to kill this dude. He waking these people up. Mm -hmm. They got to get Kwame Nkrumah the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. We got to get rid of Seymour Michelle. Stephen Biko, oh my God, he we, we locked away uh, Mandela and now you got this young guy and he got people in America saying his name and we going, we corresponding back and forth. These Negroes are starting to wake up. We got to kill him. Yeah. Mega Evers, oh, he got to die. Anybody that's unifying our people got to go. They gotta go. And because we don't know our history, we've been conditioned to just let this stuff go. We forgive. White folks don't forgive us the way we forgive them. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the struggle in the history of Frederick, Frederick Douglass and all the things he had to denounce. Look at, I don't think that y'all understand the history of the civil rights movement and all the things that we fought for and fought against. Just for human decency. We. All, all the rights the Chinese got in this country, they better be thanking my people. God damn it. They should be thanking my people. I, I really I really think that my people don't understand when people hear me say, man, we the salt of the earth, man. Uh, 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 we're great. People don't really, people think, oh, say that I'm just talking shit and I'm, you know, I'm just running my mouth. But no, people really don't understand the greatness that we come from. I don't think that people really understand um, our history, and and other groups do, do. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't waver from that. I'm not saying that we we just stand out, just totally better than everybody else. But I want I want my people to understand that from the 1800s all the way up through, we fought for Africans to get here, we fought for Asians to get here, we fought. Uh, uh, Everybody that come here, you can you can thank the the African American community, and they don't want us with Africans because the dos some of the docileness the Africans have that ain't gonna work sitting with African Americans. You can't put African Americans and Africans together and think you gonna still have the same African that want to love and forgive white people for everything. That ain't gonna happen. Be a O'Shea, you with those Africans over in Uganda? Be with them for another year or so. Watch what happened. They're gonna be goddamn more pro-black than you are, because it's impossible to be a, to be around a person and be benefit and be benefiting a, be, to, and be benefiting from a person and not and not have those not pass along those things. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's impossible. I just you know it's 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 we have. I think the gist of it is we just have to know who we are as a people. 
Mm-hmm. We have to know who we are as a people. And I think that we got to work with brothers that's woke, with sisters, with brothers and sisters that's woke, with Africans that's woke. That's on the same thought process and begin to build. And you got to build in small, you got to build it in small places. The difference is we got social media as opposed to our grandparents and great grandparents didn't have it, but they still created global phenomena. Mm-hmm. So there's no excuses to why we can't do it now. You mean to tell me we can't work with talented South Africans? South Africans understand the plight of African Americans. If if any country in South Africa, I mean, if any country in Africa is two countries that understand the plight of African Americans, and that would be Zimbabwe, and that would be uh, 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 South America. I mean, South Africa. They understand our struggle. They understand our argument, and they understand this. They understand the white man. Am I right or wrong about that, though? No, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Where some countries might not fully understand where we're coming from, a South African will. Because the same taxes that was used here was used in South Africa and in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. So I just think that um, they don't want us working together because, like I said, all the things that we already do. Just imagine what we can do now when, when, when we're working together in a larger number of people that's on one accord. And how you get people on one accord, O'Shea, is to be able to give them something. Right. Be able to provide something for them. I'm not going to Nigeria and standing on, on a soapbox and just start talking shit about the white man. I'm coming there with opportunity. Right. I come there with, with opportunity is everything. I, I And I always use the street, the street shit, the drug dealer, the drug dealer, the, the drug dealer with the plug and the hood. Just think of this, O'Shea. You know how hard it is to get black men to listen to each other and be on one accord. But the drug dealer with the plug, it's it's funny how he can have a whole team of 25 all on one accord moving. You know why? Because he got something that he can give them that's that 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 they can benefit from. They may they may die, go to jail, but he has something that the he brings something to the table that that they can all eat off of. Well, if we in Nigeria or we in Uganda or we in Kenya or Zimbabwe. We should we should we we should be going there equipped with something that the people can benefit from. Now I just told you, O'Shea, on the phone yesterday. You went to Uganda. It took you a year and a half. You got it locked down. Now it's time to take the show on the road. You, with your charisma and your personality, as an African American, man, I could I could in West Africa, man, King Ganda Channel will have ten million subscribers because as African Americans, we have a certain swag. Out of, if there's millions of black people on the planet, but it's something special about us that when we walk in the room, like 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 we top dog. At when that African American, when we put a suit on and we walk in the room, man, everybody watch the whole world watch. So now you on a stage, uh, 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 coming from Del Paso Heights, going into Africa, you built something. Now it's time to take it to Ghana, take it to Nigeria, the African American on the road, uh, uh, experiencing his roots, experiencing this, going to these different places, being able to hire hire people uh, uh, and employ them, and, and put that African American influence in, and we can begin to br- uh, bridge gaps and build. People think, oh man, that's just a small channel. No, what you're doing is something big, and people don't even see it. I've been told you, I see, I see the bigger picture. You in Poland. And you got Africans on the King Ganda channel working with an African American, all made off of YouTube channel. That's a dynamic feat in itself. So imagine what else you can do. Imagine how many other people that begin to emulate what you do, how big these things can turn. And it turned in from this right into industries. Am I mean, am I reaching? Am I right? Am I reaching? It has, it has potential, yes. Let me. Let me ask you one thing else also because you know um a lot of things because you know you see a lot of africans coming to america and um and you see quite the the the, um, the reverse like a lot of african americans are going to africa one of the things that you know whenever i thought about africa before it was like man there's just like why would anybody go there outside the business there's no opportunity there and it's just like, wow, like no Africa actually, you know, any in any country, opportunities for for brothers to work together with the people, partner with a lot of talent there. And that's something that, you know, uh, the West kind of teaches you, right? The West teaches you, you know, the opportunity is in America, 
it's only here you know and it kind of ends right you need you need to stay here this is where it's safe and um and at the opportunities you know you think about you know forbes to come up with the easiest places to do business and african countries are always at the bottom you know what i mean they always have you know africa's war torn and stuff so people who are entrepreneurs look at that and be like well wait a minute um i don't want to go to africa but then when you get in airlines you don't see nothing but the chinese there you don't see nothing but the the the, the, the white people going to africa and they're kind of making us believe indirectly that you know you just cannot be successful in africa so much so that when you talk to other africans they're even telling you they came to look listen i will never go back to nigeria i will never go back to ghana you know um and even in the black community we talk about that too in black america i'll never go back to north philly i'll never go back to del paso heights you know what is it that i mean that blacks have to kind of get out of that you know trying to go to other places and not monetize you know our own people as a pan-african group what what do you think about that because a lot of people you know try to dissuade you from dealing with africa try to dissuade you from dealing with black people in america yeah i i, I I'll, I'll i'll say this the problem is and use the term monetize the problem is anywhere you go where's black people if you notice for the most part whether you in a, whether you in the hood or you yeah whether you in the hood or you in africa right I, I always say this on my channel these countries that you go to are rich in resources so they always going to be poor and dilapidated right and i'm and I'm, I'm gonna tell you why you need um you cannot never allow those countries and those people to be off to their own vices because if you allow them to develop themselves they'll either overtake or be in position to compete against the, the people that's actually stealing the resources out their country you can't allow uh senegal uh uh, uh the congo zimbabwe kenya to actually have access to their own resources and in 20 years develop their own people they'll have their own militaries they own um they have their own industries and they won't need the white man for nothing they, they're not incapable of building cities it's just that the, the 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 those uh colonial countries still keep those countries poor and keep them from developing themselves because they're extracted well when you go to the communities where we come from it's the same thing all right just uh just uh, go ahead and tell, about your, tell us about your channel a little bit yeah um so just uh uh yeah george making um the george making experience channel make sure you guys you know like and subscribe to the george making experience channel um you know we, we talk about all the things that i'm talking about now and, and developing communities and everything else but remember but but remember you are the resource so it's, mm -hmm. their, it's not in their job to get you anything to develop yourself where they're making money off of your body and your mind as long as they control your mind and your body you are the resources so the bronx is always going to look like the bronx and unless they start redeveloping and moving you to a different place but as long as they need you you're the resource so the whole aspect of it is changing our minds and the way we view ourselves and each other and things have change but when you go to africa with all the resources that that actually feeds the planet o'shea as long as the african is still under the the mental uh 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 the mental chain the mental chains of white supremacy those countries are never going to be developed right they, never, they will always be underdeveloped you cannot allow them to be off to their own vices to compete right. It, the UN would fall apart if Africa just said we taking all our shit back but Africa don't right. have a military to defend it so what I'm saying when I'm saying it's all mental South right. Africa Africa don't need nobody to tell right. them what to do or nothing I mean Africans ain't born with one less chromosome Africans can do everything that the European and China is doing but don't ever let nobody tell you that well they got to get out because they got to they, they need them to develop bullshit Africans all over the right. world can go play and do everything we already build every damn thing we don't need them to do nothing we need them to get out that's what we need right. and okay. until that we're gonna always be up under them psychologically that's it all right brother and i do thank you so much for coming on guys check out the george making youtube channel below thank you for coming on and as you know keep it real king gone forever i'm out